Welcome to another episode of The Wave, the wonderful Alberni Valley experience. I'm your host, Don Texan, and we're going to be hearing a story of another person or persons who have had a wave, a wonderful Alberni Valley experience. I'm so glad you were able to come on the show today, and I would like to introduce him right away. I would like to welcome Josh and Heather. Hello, Josh. Hello, Heather. Thank you for coming Hi. on the show. Hi. You are officially the first couple I have interviewed as far as the show goes. So I'm so happy you're able to come here and join us today. So you're in self-isolation or you're still up and about? Yeah, well, we are we are working from home. So mm -hmm. we, we are uh, pretty much isolated. We have a 15-year-old daughter also at home but, um, and, a, and a dog, a seven-month-old puppy. Oh, cute. Yeah. You just got him, you mean? Uh, well, we got him in December, so he's he's gotten a little bigger than when we first brought him home, but he's now seven months. Oh, wow. What kind of a dog is he? Well, he's a what they call an Australian Labradoodle. I could have brought him on the screen to show you, but I'd have to go upstairs and get him. Oh, that's okay. We'll meet him some other time. Thank you again, Heather, and thank you again, Josh, for coming to the show. Uh, first of all, let's start with... An, Telling us your story about your wonderful Alberni Valley experience, which I already had a preview of in my other interviews with Josh. <laughs> Let's start with Josh. You were born in a faraway place. Yes. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> in a continent far, far away. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, in Johannesburg, in South Africa. Uh, and we, my mom, I immigrated with uh, my younger brother and I to New York. Uh, for six months uh, where we stayed with my grandparents and then to Canada. Um, Which part of Canada? Uh, we went to New West originally. Oh, okay. And, yeah. So you were just like five, six years old then? Yep. Okay, and, cool. And shortly after then, uh, we moved to a small town outside of Squamish called Britannia Beach. Oh, cool. Because mm -hmm. as far as I know, you're an outdoorsy guy. You love surfing and hiking and mountain climbing and everything, right? Yeah. So from Johannesburg to Canada to Ontario, and then you passed by New York first, as you said, mm -hmm. and then came to uh, British, beautiful British Columbia. How about you, Heather? You were born here, right? Yeah, I was born and I grew up in a little town in Ontario called Tweed, actually smaller than Port Alberni. Really? Yeah, I, I was population 1,800. That's a shock. That means there's something smaller than Portal Burning. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I knew a little bit about what it was like to grow up as a kid in a small town. Um, but then when I finished my university degree in Ontario, I decided to, I'd never been West. So I took, um, for my program, we had to do an internship which is like a practical training application of your degree under our supervision. So I came to Vancouver to do my internship and I loved it so much that I stayed and I never thought I would live in a big city, but I was there for almost 25 years. In and Vancouver? In Vancouver, in the Lord. Wow. Yeah. So I'm just curious, you mentioned an internship, an internship on what, what, what line of study were you involved with? Um, I did a, my first degree was in music therapy so mm -hmm. oh yes there. i've experienced your music therapy up to now that song is still fresh in my mind yeah and it was called the wave <laughs> that's right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um yeah so that's what i was initially doing when i came to vancouver and then i went on and did some more studies and became a registered counselor and eventually um, as you know from talking to josh um founded this charity that we run and um, yeah, so, so and we've been, I guess how we ended up here was we decided that we wanted to own a house and it's very difficult in Vancouver, as people mm. I'm sure know, it's very expensive. And we were looking all around BC actually to see where we could move and still run our charity in Vancouver. Um, and so that's, we started, yeah. So maybe, is that enough? For me to start with, or you can ask yeah, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's a good segue. I was going there anyways. <laughs> Not that this is a competition about who has the smallest community or grew up in the smallest community. But Britannia had a population of less than 100 when I first moved there. Britannia in? Britannia Beach. And oh, Squamish, okay. uh, which is the community I 
uh, went to school. Uh, I think we had a population under 8,000 at the time. Well, they had a smaller population. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's uh, fast forward to how you guys met. Let's go there. All right. Do you want me to start? Well, I was in better shape back then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that um, the picture that I see on Facebook and the surfboard and the riding the waves? <laughs> well, I was in even better shape than that. Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, that picture I have a shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, curious. Who caught whose eye? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Uh, well, I would probably say Josh caught my eye and he was oh. unaware for a little while that he caught my eye. So he had to be surprised. I guess he had to, he was, he was thinking somewhere else and, and I had to kind of get his attention. Oh, well, you're not quite the eye catcher yourself, I'm sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are even now. You are an eye catcher. Anyway, <laughs> so where was this? So we were. Oh, well, I was actually living still on the Lower Mainland, and uh, Josh was living here on in Nanaimo. In Nanaimo, mm -hmm. um, and we knew each other through several connections. But we we were friends first. Like I guess lots of couples start that way, and I he was. Um, you know, we we did some camping together. Uh, went to the folk fest. Went to the. I knew he liked music. I liked music. Invited him to come with his kids to Vancouver to the folk festival. I don't know if you've ever been to that festival, Don, but it's a it's an awesome outdoor festival on the Jericho Beach. And oh wow! Lots of music from around the world. Anyway, so we had a great time there, and then we just continued to do just connecting, and I guess he finally noticed that I thought he was handsome <laughs> and he finally started to say hey maybe this is a possibility so okay, it took you five years to move in together <laughs> yeah. sorry say that again it took you five years to move in together and you've been friends and going out and yeah, I, I moved to uh, the lower mainland um gosh was it 2010 yeah yeah so I moved to the lower mainland um, I have three kids that I have custody of, two are adults now, but uh, yeah, I was, uh, I just uh, needed a, a change of environment after my separation, even though it'd been quite some time after, I just, I needed to be around a different support system and, uh, you know, to find some work. Um, and uh, soon after I arrived uh, in Vancouver, is kind of when we connected and right from that moment I said I got to get out of the city let's move out of the city <laughs> well uh, you so. did say you were moving uh, you lived in Nanaimo for what 20 years 10 years oh yeah. 10 years and you were just passing through Alberni Port Alberni every now and then and you only stopped at Port Alberni if you needed to have to uh, load some gas well I'm a uh, I'm a pretty uh, avid camper and I used to be uh, extremely into outdoor recreation and um, being a young, you know, I was a young, I was a parent uh, really young. My son was born when I was 20. Uh, so I was in university. Uh, I had three full-time jobs and three kids to, to raise but limited uh, resources. So, um, yeah, one of the things I would do with my kids is take them camping. Mm. And uh, my favorite uh, campsite, it still is one of my favorites today, is uh, out in uh, Pachina Bay, out in Banfield. Oh, okay. Yeah, so passing through Port Alberni was what I would do on my way to Tofino or Banfield. Uh, and if I had to, I'd get gas, but I usually try and avoid it. Because... Um, <laughs> Why well, wasn't gas cheaper here in Barla Bernie then? <laughs> it didn't look like a welcoming town, to be honest. It's a small logging town. Having this was like, but this was like 10, 10 20 years ago, was it? Ago. Well, okay. Well, over 20 years ago, I guess now that I started coming through Port Alberni. So were you with Heather at the time or Heather came to the island on her own then? 
No, we, well, we came to the island together, but just two years ago. So we, uh, as Josh said, um, kind of went forward with our relationship once he came to Vancouver and then, uh, but it was still about five years of just, you know, keeping him at bay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had my own condo. He had three kids. So he had a, a big house to rent to have, make sure they all had space. And so we just did, you know, like lots of couples, kind of the back and forth. And Josh was the, the mom and the dad for his kids. So, mm -hmm. so I, I just got to be a, a supporter of the process a little bit. Um, but he was very independent with his children. So, yeah, so it was about five years before I said, well, I'm ready to move into a house with you and, and three children. Um, and so we did that and we lived in Burnaby. Um, okay. A, a great place that we rented there. And then we just got talking about, you know, do we want to rent forever? Do, could we afford to buy something somewhere else? And we, as Josh said, we did a lot of camping. So we were always planning how to leave the city. Anytime we had time off, we would be like, let's get our trailer and pack up the van and, and head out, right? Mm -hmm. So so we were always looking for places that were in the woods and on the lake and, you know, by the water or just quiet places, right? We were always looking for that. 17 hours from Burnaby is where we would go twice a year at least. Usually, so to the Kootenays. Wow. Yeah, so that's how far away we felt we had to get to get sort of the peace that we wanted. Um, and the kind of camping that we like to do. So we, um, we, we were on a, how we ended up here because Josh, because of his marriage breakup and kind of negative experience living in Nanaimo at that time said, oh, we, we can look anywhere in BC, but not on Vancouver Island. Big X, I had a big X on Vancouver Island. Yeah, you told Island. me about that. So yeah. back, Vancouver was an X. Well, like we, we were looking in PEI, to be honest. PEI, New Brunswick, all over Ontario. North Kootenays, yeah. like re really small, remote communities. We were looking in all sorts of places. Not Vancouver Island. Not Vancouver Island, but we have a friend who has a ca beautiful cabin here on the beach in Qualicum, and she let us use it sometimes as a place to come for a little break from our work. And so we were doing our December, our Christmas vacation in middle of January, which is kind of normal for our work. So Josh and I had a week without the kids, and we were going to come to the cabin, and just relax and then we drove past a realtor's office in Parksville on the way to the cabin and uh, we, we were just like oh let's just drop in and see what you can get in Parksville for whatever budget we're looking you know around five hundred thousand dollars or something so let's just see what you could get here because we know in Vancouver um, it's a studio apartment yeah it's a you know it's like it's a half of a studio apartment <laughs> For yeah. a budget like that. Nowadays yeah. it's half. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know that because you live there, right? So anyway, we walked in and we met this really nice young man who sat and listened to us and took a little, he said, just give me a couple days here. We're I said, you're wasting your time. We're not moving to the island. <laughs> and you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so we got, he got back to us in a couple of days and he said, I've, I got a few places in the news and Qualicum Parksville for you guys to see. And he said, but I just wondered, you know, which you were, guys... were teardown houses, by the way, at that budget. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Yep. They were teared down. So they were basically spending the money to buy the house and tear it down to build. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was anyway, but he said, have you ever thought of looking at Port Alberni? It's not that far away. I actually live there. And we oh, were... there you go. And I said, it smells like poo. Because they used to, right? Yes, uh, because because of the mills. Mm -hmm. They used to smell really bad. Hence, one of the reasons uh, I didn't want to stop here. And, uh, and I said, where's Port Alberni? <laughs> so okay. He said, it's only about 35 minutes over the mountain. The hump, yeah. yeah. He, he, Through the gove and over the hump. <laughs> and he said that it had been, he'd moved there about two years previously with his wife and young uh, young child and moved from Alberta and they really really loved the community and he was really positive. He would actually be a great uh, person to interview for the show. Yeah what's his Maybe name? Nod, N -A -U -D. We can send you his information. Yeah. Yes please I would love to interview him. I have interviewed the top realtor here Kathy Braden and she has nothing but good things to say about Portal Bernie. Yeah. 
so much as I can say for the other people who have only bad thing to say for Robert, but so, that's why they're not my guest on my show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the young man who I'm going to be interviewing uh, hopefully soon uh, convinced you to uh, take a look at Port Alberni. He did. And okay, what yeah, happened then? We, we decided to, to come out and have a look at a few things because he had what he had to show us here was looked a lot nicer than what we had seen in our price point in Qualcomm Parksville. Well, anywhere, <laughs> as a yeah. matter of fact, with our uh, radius, we kind of narrowed it down. We were going to stay in BC. Uh, after rule, we had an, oh, I had a negative experience uh, in the Maritimes. Uh, it's very conservative in some areas, and uh, the work we do, we have to be welcoming to all people of all. Yes, backgrounds. absolutely. And so yeah, it just wasn't a fit for us in that area. So at any rate, we narrowed uh, our map down to a five-hour radius of Vancouver, uh, which included like Kelowna and Kamloops and Fern and a whole bunch of places. Still an accent, Vancouver Island. Yes, that's what I was about to say. At that point, when you were talking to this uh, young man, this realtor, the X was still in Vancouver Island. Not just Port Alberni, but the whole Vancouver Island was an X for you. Yeah, but the irony is one of the houses, because uh, I think he showed us three properties uh, in Port Alberni, four. or four. Uh, one, uh, the, the house uh, that we're in now, uh, it kept coming up when I, you know, put in our budget and you know, the five hour radius of um, Vancouver, uh, it kept showing up. Uh, and I kept saying to Heather, oh, I really like the house. She said, well, that's way too far. Because in the pictures, it looked like you were miles out in the, in the bushes. Um, so we had no reference of how close it was to community. And at that time, it was like still an X. <laughs> uh, yes. So we, this was the last house that we came to see. And I walked into the into the kitchen and I looked out the window and I said, make an offer. <laughs> Heather was and, standing. And that is when the X came off. <laughs> I wasn't even in the house, not even 10 seconds. And uh, I, I didn't even see anything else. I just, I went straight to the kitchen window because it reminded me of where we would drive 17 hours up in the Kootenays. Oh, okay. And uh, the feeling we would get every time we go up there is, you know, the weight lifts off or recharge to go back to do the work we do. And I, I kid you not, by the time we reached Hope, you start seeing the traffic, all attention would come back, right? So I just said, put in an offer because if we could live and have that feeling of peace and, and uh, rejuvenation, um, it, it just, I didn't even think about it. Heather, uh, uh, yeah, what about you, Heather? I, I'm curious to know your uh, your side of the story because I've already heard Josh's story about like walking into the kitchen, <laughs> making an offer, the ex came off. Did you agree with the ex on the island at the time? No, I didn't. I wasn't attached to the ex at all. Like I, I, but I also hadn't really, I hadn't thought too much about the island um, just because he was so strongly against it. And, and usually the way it works in our relationship is we have to come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really believe that it's helpful ever to sort of say, oh, you have to do this for me, right? I think it, it always has to come to some kind of mutual agreement. So, yes. so I didn't push it, um, but I knew as soon as we, um, as soon as we got here and he had that response that things were changing. So I, I really love the house. Um, as you walk in, what Josh is referencing is there's this kind of mountain vista with the forest. And you wow. Don't even, you don't even see a house. So we're, we're about 10 minutes outside of Port Alberni and there's, it's all the houses in this sort of area have about one acre lots. So you have neighbors, but just the way our house is situated kind of up on a high, it's not a cliff, but it's just- We used to live next to the Sky Train. Yeah, such awesome. a contrast. So, <laughs> it is. So it's a, it's a contrast, but it, it that is definitely a big contrast. <laughs> so there's that like essence of of there's this beautiful place that that you kind of just didn't even know was here, and so that was the first. And the house was was spacious and lovely, and we knew we could kind of really create some things around it that that would fit our design ideas and. Um, yeah, so we actually didn't, at that point, we didn't really know anything about the community of Port Alberni. We just knew, hey, and I could get 
So my office was still in Vancouver that I was going to need to go in every week or two to, to work there. So I knew I could get to the ferry in an hour and 10 minutes. I could, you know, work on the ferry and go to work. So it all kind of fit. Um, and the, the, the knowledge of the actual community at Port Alberni actually came only after we moved here. After we, no, it came after we actually. The day we, the day we moved in. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I have to backtrack a little bit. So you moved here two years ago. Am I right? It'll be two years, July 1st. Two years, July 1st. Imagine that. So yeah. that's when, uh, but what do you remember the date when you walked into that house and the X came off? <laughs> I think we were, so that would have been middle of January. Oh, okay. We we're looking, so the market, I think, was quite slow uh, at that time. Um, so we did, but we did make an offer within a couple of days once we got our, we well, what happened was I said, team. Olivia, make an offer and Heather was to the right of me, just back a little bit at the end of the kitchen and she's shaking her head. Well, I don't make any decisions oh, like that, this. Really. He does. Well, we, at any rate, uh, and I'm like, trust me, Olivia, she's not going to sleep tonight. And the, the problem is we did try and, um, pursue a couple of houses on the lower mainland out in Chilliwack, uh, only because we were feeling desperate at the time uh, to to get into a house uh, before the renter decided to move in or sell ours. Um, at any rate, you, we would see a house online. By the time we drove to Chilliwack, it would be sold and usually a couple hundred thousand over asking. No one's Wow. Yeah, that's kind of the, the market on the lower mainland, whereas this house had been on the market Come for on. no over six months. Um, and, um, so there wasn't this urgency At any rate, Heather didn't sleep much that night. And then I did contact, uh, Olivia, the realtor the next morning saying, yes, we'd like to, uh, put forward an offer. And, um, and then there was the, the mad dash to the bank to see if we'd even qualify. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of people do do it the other way around, which is probably the right way, but it all came together. There's still fun in that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the people who lived here actually didn't want to move until the end of June, which was perfect for us because it allowed our kids to finish school. Uh huh. Yeah. Us to wrap up some of our work gets really busy in June, so the timing was actually perfect and they they were i think building another house somewhere so they didn't want to move right away anyway so it was meant to be it worked, it worked out. yep like i always say if it's meant to be it'll be and so then, now let's fast forward to the day you moved in and because josh mentioned to me something that really uh touched my heart when he said the best element or the best thing about moving to Port Alberni, it's not so much the nature and the beauty and the view, but, but it's the people. I like to talk to the mm -hmm. two of you about that. So you discovered the community, you met people, and what were your thoughts and feelings at the time? Well, the the night that, uh, well, the day that we moved in, uh, we Heather and I had been up for about two or three straight days. Like we, I, I thought I was organized. I started packing in February. I had I, thought, <laughs> I had the boxes all downstairs. All we had to do was tidy up the kitchen and a couple clothes in the bedroom. Well, that little bit I thought we had left uh, was 22 uh, runs to thrift stores delivering stuff. It was some uh, loads to the recycling depots, and that uh, was us being up for 72 hours. And and three teenagers who hadn't started <laughs> packing up their rooms. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, right? So yeah. we we were really sleep deprived. We got to the ferry and uh like just in the neck Well, I almost got on the wrong ferry actually. Oh, we, <laughs> actually Heather had booked our ferry back in March. <clears throat> oh wow. Because we knew it was Canada Day weekend. Uh well the ferry had broken down, so all the reservations were cancelled. So we did this mad dash, sleep deprived to the ferry. Uh, I think we slept in the moving trucks till we were able to get on a boat. And then um, when we got here, um, yeah, they, they did send Heather to the wrong ferry and had a rerouter. But <laughs> <laughs> it was, we were, we had no energy left. We were excited to get here, uh, but dreading, you know, all we want to do is set up beds and go to sleep. Um, our neighbor, 
she came right over, introduced himself right away, had a tray of lemonade. Homemade. Wow. Homemade lemonade with cups. He says, you probably don't have cups unpacked. And it was really hot. So um, at any rate, I was just dumbfounded because I'm used to living next to neighbors who don't talk to you. Exactly. And um, then he walks into the, he did not, he walked in the moving truck and starts moving our furniture. Oh and going to the I thought he was trying to rob us. <laughs> oh, I, that was my, I, this guy's trying to rob us. Well, you're from Burnaby, who can blame you? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that he's a retired RCMP officer. Yeah. Oh and, my and, goodness. And, um, what was this? Was it uh, John? And, and okay. Incredible neighbors. We couldn't, we, you can find, we got the best neighbors in the world. Um, well, everybody the does. Wife, they, here. Made map, <laughs> they made a map for us of our entire neighborhood. Uh, and he drew in all the little houses and the names of the couples that live in the houses. Uh, he says, well, you're going to run into people. And they're all going to say hi and welcome to Port Alberti. And uh, just so you can remember their names, here's a map. And then he gave us a map of all like, uh, who you call for this or that. And you know, it was like just... a little orientation, right? Oh, and... There you go. Welcome to the Alberni Valley experience. Another meaning of the wave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. every store, every business, everywhere we went into, um, people, were, I don't know if they noticed we were new or like they could kind of tell, um, but they reached their hand out across the desk or a table and they'd say, welcome to Port Alberni. Mm -hmm. And it... I Never. would have done the same thing if I met you at that time as well. <laughs> That's right. And we, it we was go very on. consistent. So Josh and I were working, doing renos on the house at that time. We weren't at work. So we were here all the time. And he would go off to hardware store and I would go off to, I don't know. She was sun tanning on the deck. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> anyway. It's July. That's what you do here in Port Alberti. <laughs> And we'd go off in these different directions and we'd both come back with a similar experience. It would take us like an hour to get some one thing at the store because you'd get chatting to somebody. They would talk to you. They would ask you questions. Oh, you've just moved here. Welcome to Port Alberni. Um, big smiles and, and curious to know why. Like people always are curious, right? Why did you move here? What are you doing for work? And all of those kinds of questions, but not in a, wasn't in an invasive way. It was like in a genuinely... We're genuinely interested and uh so so we a welcoming had, way a mm -hmm. welcoming way we both had these very similar experiences and everywhere we went even like going on walks like on some of the trails you run into people and it's just amazing long conversations and, and it could be older people or young like teenagers or middle-aged people like us or well josh won't classify himself as middle-aged but uh <laughs> It, it could be across <laughs> demographics, right? So, so that was really neat. And then, of course, I, I met you. We met you through, we attended Community Potluck at, at Trinity. And, and I was so impressed with the community at Trinity that I just, you know, kind of got, got more involved there. And, and just what a, wonderful people in, again, super welcoming, warm, genuine. Um, the, it's not a kind of a, it's, it's not a, you know, people doing something to look good. It's genuinely how people are. Like, there's an authenticity. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, when you've been working and living in Vancouver for a long time, it's very sophisticated there. Like, there's a lot of people get very dressed up to go for a walk. And, and here, you know, people are just, they're casual. Sometimes they're dressed up. Safety vests and plaid jackets is kind of the walking attire. <laughs> well, well, I'm trying to change that. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> of course you will. Some of wear capes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't seem to matter, right? It's not, it's not how people are not assessing exactly. what you're wearing. They're just interested in, in why, why you moved here. But so. the, what, It's not what we wear, it's who we are. That's yeah. what matters, you yeah, know? true. Well, we, we also notice, because we, we like to be outdoors a lot, uh, through, especially as the weather is warming up, you see people on their porches or in their yards having little campfires. And there seems to be this real strong sense of community that you don't find, or it's harder to find in larger urban areas. Mm -hmm. that, um, it's even in the grocery shopping, it is so relaxed to go grocery shopping here. Um, it is. 
nobody's yeah. pushing you with their shopping cart <laughs> <laughs> like in richmond <laughs> um like it's it's just really i don't think we've had one negative encounter with anybody here it, it's been very positive for us um mm -hmm. yeah it, and and things that, <clears throat> that well i'm just curious about the children how are they liking it so well so too uh, my son uh, at the time when we moved here uh he stayed behind for three weeks and then he went to the uk for a year and um my daughter stayed behind because she's a vet tech in burnaby at a, a veterinary hospital so now my son's back from the uk and him and my daughter are living together in a very small tiny space <laughs> paying our mortgage or what we pay for a mortgage they're paying in rent almost but um yeah, so they, 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 the two oldest didn't move here. They've come to visit and they love it. And I think they're envious of their younger sister who, um, t so when we bought the house, I told the kids, um, my youngest started crying right away. Well, so the two actually, both daughters they were They were crying. very upset that we would leave, take them from the city. Yeah, yeah. very oh. upset. <clears throat> now, um, Harmony doesn't even like to go. She doesn't want to go to the city. She tells her friends to come here. Uh, she yeah. had one friend come and visit last summer or last spring and i went to drop her friend off at the ferry and her friend started crying because she didn't want to leave port alberni <laughs> yeah. well that's how i felt the same thing when i came here i said i wish i would live in port alberni and four years after my wish came through and i've loved every single day of it since so that's what i want to uh, end with how are you liking your wonderful alberni valley experience Thus far, it's been two years now, right? It's been two years. Just about, yeah. And honestly, every day we discover something new about this community that we love and, and our gratitude for being here just grows. It's every every day we, we're very similar that way. We wake up and we say, wow, wow, like this is such a, we feel so grateful to be here and to to, to get to know more about the community as, as we, uh, as we settle ourselves in, we're, yeah. we're staying. And every, every day, uh, like it's no joke, every day we, we're like, wow, uh, can't believe we're here. It's so awesome. We're so lucky. The people here are amazing. Like every single day. It's Well, especially now in this pandemic and this social distancing and all these changes that have come about us, I have interviewed people who have moved from different parts of Canada and they're just so happy that they had to self-isolate here in Port <laughs> Can you imagine self-isolating back there in Richmond or Burnaby? I can. <laughs> and we <laughs> talk to people who are and they're not as happy as we are. Oh exactly right. Here I mean we have we have the space to do our social distancing. Yeah. There's still people who are still friendly. I mean I'm smiling even if I'm wearing a mask. I want them to know I'm smiling. I'm underneath this mask I'm smiling. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> Well, actually, Don, you got, I didn't say this in our story, but after the, all the paperwork had gone through, I think it was uh, February, end of February or middle of February, after we had officially bought the house, we decided to go online to look up Port Alberni. Like, what's it like there, right? Um, having lived in Squamish uh, when it was a big logging community, I was kind of prepared for there to be some people that wouldn't be so welcoming. And our we just thought, well, there's enough space in the yard that we don't have to get close to people. But we came across the worst place to live article. Yes. And uh, I really wish that was the story you'd be telling because I don't want anything to change here. I don't, want, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want everyone from the miserable towns to move. <laughs> There's there's enough to share. Don't worry about it. for now. But we will put a, like sort of a limit to it. <laughs> Well, I felt the same way in the first episode or the first broadcast of our show, The Wave. I said, my advice to people who are watching is don't come here if you're a mean person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was also part of why I created the show because I did, I saw such beauty. I saw, I had such a wonderful experience not knowing about the background and everything. And then as I was living here, I started to discover the bad things that were being said about Portal Burnie. I mean, the worst place to live, most polluted, highest crime rate. Of course, we have a high crime rate because the population is small. Mm -hmm. So it automatically skews the, um, the statistics because we have a small population. You have a 
uh, rate of crime this month. But if you go number by number, there's more crime in Surrey, there's more crime in Burnaby. But because they have a bigger population, the percentage doesn't uh, reflect that. Yeah, well, the last two years uh, we lived in uh, North Burnaby, uh, there was two drive-bys at the same uh, townhouse unit. Shootings. Shootings. They drove by and shot up the, the unit. Uh, there was a kid that jumped off a balcony. Like, you know, the crime is everywhere. Uh, I, I really get the sense here if something was happening, uh, then I've actually had this experience. Uh, someone's car broke down and I pulled over and all of a sudden seven other cars are there, six or seven other cars. That's I true. didn't feel that our neighbors would come to the rescue. I didn't feel that at all in, uh, in Vancouver. And I, so but they have no time. They're rushing to pay their mortgage and so <laughs> Or someone else to deal with it. But yeah, we are blessed. And um, yeah, just very blessed and feel very fortunate to have met you and um, we're looking forward to getting to know you even more. So. Well, thank you. That's very nice. That's very nice of you. I mean, I'm so happy to have met you at the time when I did because that was the time when I was in the process of grieving. And your music therapy, Heather, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> it really helped me come to terms with the emotions I've been feeling. Then my talk with Josh and the anniversary of Brian's passing. And he referred me to uh, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. And we had a nice long talk. And the funny thing is, on the day I was talking to Michael, it was his birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it was that's... Michael's birthday on the day we had this talk about, you know, how we're dealing with grief and everything. No, I'd like to give you a chance before we end all this, a little bit about the, what you do, because you, you're doing wonderful work in, in terms of uh, advocacy and uh, help with the people who are grieving and going through traumatic experiences. Talk, tell us a little bit about Camp Carry. Um, well, I know, and I know that you did have an interview with Josh, so um, maybe I'll just do a short summary. Is is just essentially it's a charity that we co-founded. Uh, we got our status in 2011, but we've been running programs since 2007. 98. Um, we have different dates, different timelines. Well, anyway. it's sort of like, how do you count when you got together, right? We all measure that differently. <laughs> <laughs> Heather started our very first program in 1998, which runs today. <laughs> okay. I've been working in the hospice palliative care uh, bereavement field for a long time, basically my whole uh, counseling career. And I just saw that there was this need for us to care for families after the death of someone they love, individuals, children, youth, adults, and family units, to care for them because the medical system, you know, basically once your loved one has died, they, the medical system is no longer involved. Mm -hmm. And for you as a, as a, you know, grieving your husband that's the beginning of your journey right yes to grief so we wanted to we, we wanted to be there for people and we know that that's a very long-term proposition so um, most of the uh, people who come to our services access us for you know one two three four sometimes even five years um, we offer counseling and support groups and these camps which Josh is proudly displaying the camp carry t-shirt that's our camp program which is um, which we run for families and for youth um, and that's it's all about creating community so the heart of our mission is that we don't want people to grieve alone or to cope with illness alone and we reach out to find ways to bring people together in community so they're not so alone that's what we do okay yeah. well i i'm sorry we have to come to an end for this interview but it has been a wonderful interview two years living happily ever after here in Port Alberni, continuing their wonderful Alberni Valley experience. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Heather. And thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time on The Way.